Use McLaurin series to determine the power series for ln of x, ln of 1 plus x as far as the term in x raised to power 5. Hence, evaluate the integral of from limit 0 to 0 0.4 of ln of 1 plus x over root x with respect to x. Yes. Now, the first thing we've been told to find is the power series of ln of 1 plus x using McLaurin's series. series. So, the first thing you know is that your f of x will be given to be ln of 1 plus x. x. So, for us to get x raised to power 5, meaning we have to differentiate it 5 times. Are we together? We have to differentiate it 5 times. So start. If you differentiate this for the first time, would you get? When you differentiate ln of x, ln of t, you are supposed to get 1 over t, isn't it? Meaning your t is 1 plus x. So if you differentiate ln of 1 plus x, you get 1 over? 1 plus x. Isn't it? Are we together? Yes. Then you differentiate the inner function. If you differentiate the inner function with t is 1 plus x, you just get 1. Yes. Differentiating 1 is 0, differentiate x is 1. So it is times 1. It remains the way it is, isn't it? Exactly. Good. So after that, this one can be written in the form 1 plus x raised to negative. One, one, isn't it? Yes. Good. Go on. Differentiate x, differentiate it for the second time. See, you start with the order negative 1 times the coefficient 1, which is here. Negative 1 times 1, you get negative. One. Are we together? Yes. Negative 1 into 1 plus x, then you reduce the power by 1. It becomes negative. So, how do you differentiate a polynomial, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you differentiate the inner function 1 plus x, you just get 1. So, this times 1, it will remain the way it is. Are we together? Yes. Then you move to the next one. If you differentiate it for the third time, it is negative 2 times negative 1, isn't it? Yes. Which is 2 into 1 plus x, then you reduce the power by 1. So, you get it is negative 3. If you, if you differentiate, the inner function is just 1. So 1 is just 1. Are we together? The inner function 1 plus x, if you differentiate, is just 1. 1. Then you go on. If you differentiate it for the fourth time, what do you get? Negative 3 times 2, isn't it? Which is negative? 6. 6. Then 1 plus x, then you reduce the power by 1. Negative 3 minus 1 becomes negative 4, isn't it? If you differentiate this in a function, you get 1. So times 1, it remains the way it is, isn't it? Then we are differentiating for the fifth time to get x raised to power 5, isn't it? So the fifth derivative of x, negative 4 times negative 6, 24. Then we have 1 plus x. Then you reduce the power by 1. You get negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. If you reduce, if you differentiate the inner function, you get 1. So it's just like that way, isn't it? So from here, what do we want now? We want the f of zeros. So this is, we get f of zero, then we get f prime of zero, then we get f double prime of zero, then we get f triple prime of zero. So you see, as we do more examples, we continue ignoring this, those many steps which are unnecessary, isn't it? Yes. Then you move here, when you get f fourth prime of zero in the last one, f fifth prime of zero. So what have you done? Where there is x, you put zero. So where there is x, you put zero the first one. You get ln of one plus zero, which is ln of one, isn't it? So ln of one will be, so it will be zero. Then f prime of zero, when you put zero where x is, so you get one plus negative one. So one plus two by anything is just one. So then you remain with f double prime of zero, when you put zero where x axis, you have negative one times one raised to power negative. One raised to anything is just one, isn't it? So here you remain with the negative. Negative one, meaning the whole of this bracket will go to one, isn't it? Because x is zero. So one raised to negative two is one. Are we together? Move on. f triple prime of zero, where this x put zero, you get two times one, which is just which is just two. two. You go on. When you put x, what is x? If you put zero, you remain with one less to power negative four, which is just one times negative six. You remain with where there is x. If you put zero, you get fifth derivative of x with respect to zero. So here you remain with one less to negative five is one times twenty-four. It is twenty-four. Are we together? 
So after that, Maclaurin series, what do you know about Maclaurin series? If you are looking for the Maclaurin series expansion of f of x, you start from f of 0, isn't it? So we start from f of 0, then it means when we differentiate f of 0 from for the first time, it is over that one factorial, isn't it? Then your x is raised to power that one. Are we together? Then you move again. If you now differentiate this f of 0 for the second time, meaning it is over 2 factorial, then your x is raised to power that 2. Isn't it? You go on. If you differentiate it f of 0 for the third term, third time means you have 3 factorial, then your x is raised to power that 3. Isn't it? Yes. If you differentiate f of 0 for the fourth time, it means it is over that 4 factorial, then your x is raised to power that 4. Isn't it? Yes. If you differentiate it for the fifth time, f fifth derivative of zero, meaning it is over five factorial, then your x is raised to power that five. So as you see, you found the Maclaurin series expansion of f of f of x, isn't it? So see what we do now is substitution. Are we together? So start substituting. What is f of x? Well, the f of x you put the value of f of x is. Ln of f of x is 1 plus x. Ln of 1 plus x. To be equal to what? What is f of 0? It's 0. It's 0. So this term is not there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then here, what is f prime of 0? 1. So 1 for 1 factorial is? 1. It's 1. Times x raised to power 1. So you just remain with x. Mm -hmm. We are done with this term, isn't it? Move here. f double prime of 0 is? Negative. Negative 1. So negative 1 over 2 factorial you get? Negative 1 half. Yes. So that is negative a half, then you can see you have x squared there, isn't it? Move to this term, f triple prime of 0, you found is? 2. 2 over 3 factorial is? 1 over 6. 1 over 3. 2 over 3 factorial is 2 over 6. That is 1 over? Meaning it is plus a third. Then you can see your x cubed is there, isn't it? Then you move to the next one. The fourth derivative of f of 0 is? You found it to be negative. Negative 6 over 4 factorial, negative 6 over 4 factorial, negative 1 over 4. Yes. Then you can see your x is raised to power 4 there, isn't it? Then you move to the next one, which is? Which is? 24. F raised to power 24. So this is 24 over 5 factorial. Yes. You found it is? 1 over 5. 1 over 5. Yes. So that is plus 1 over 5. Then you can see your x is raised to power 5 there, isn't it? So have you seen, you've used Maclaurin series to find the expansion of ln of 1 plus x. Hence, you want to evaluate the integral from 0 to 0 0.4 of ln of 1 plus x over root, over root x with respect to x. Are we together? That is the, the integral we want to evaluate. The integral of... Are we together there? ln of 1 plus x over root x. So look here. This is the same as, remember, when you have, let me write it from far here so that I create more space. From 0 to 0 0.4, ln of 1 plus x over root x dx. This is the same as you are integrating from 0 to 0 0.4 ln of 1 plus x, you substitute the value of ln of 1 plus x. ln of 1 plus x is the whole of this, isn't it? Yes. It is x minus a half x squared plus a third x cubed minus 1 over 4 x raised to power 4 plus 1 over 5 x raised to power 5. Then in the denominator, we have x square root of x. Remember, square root of x is what? Is x raised to power half. The rule of that is what you are integrating with respect to x. Have you seen what has happened? It is over square root of x. And square root of x is x raised to power a half. Then you use the laws of indices. 0 to 0 0.4. This x raised to power half is the common denominator. Are you seeing? Meaning you start x divided by x raised to power half. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. x divided by x raised to power? Yeah. It is the common denominator. Common denominator will imply this. If everything is over x raised to power half, it means this is over x raised to power half, 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 this is over x raised to power, because it is the common denominator. Are you seeing that? Yeah. 
then you start loss of indices. When you have the same base with the division signs, you subtract the powers. Then it is, the all of this is what you are integrating with respect to x. So, same base, what do you get here? x raised to power 1 divided by x raised to power half, it is 1 minus half. So, you get this x raised to power half. Loss of indices, isn't it? Then you go here, it is minus a half. x raised to power 2 over x raised to power half, same base division sign 2 minus a half. You get it is raised to power 3 over. Are we together? See, so you are using the loss of indices. Yeah. Then you move to the next one. Here we have plus a third, then x raised to power 3 divided by x raised to power half. That is x, same base with the division sign, you subtract. 3 minus a half is? 3 minus a half. 5 over 2. Move to the next one, it is minus 1 over 4, then x raised to power 4 divided by x raised to power half. That is same base, you subtract the powers, 4 minus a half, isn't it? You get 7 over. 7 over 2. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? You move on. Plus. 1 over. 1 over 5. X raised to power 5 divided by X raised to power half is X. Same base with the division side you subtract the power. Isn't it? 5 minus a half is 9 over. 9 over 2. So the rule of this is what we are integrating with respect to x. Are we together? That is what we are integrating with respect to x. So, can we integrate that with respect to x? So, we found the integral from 0 to 0 0.4 of x raised to power half minus a half x raised to power 3 over 2 plus a third x raised to power 5 over 2 minus a quarter x raised to power 7 over 2 plus 1 over 5 x raised to power 9 over 2 and you are integrating the whole of it with respect to x. Are we together? You are integrating the whole of that with respect to x. So, let us start. I start integrating here. x raised to power half, you add 1 to the power and you divide by that to the power, isn't it? See, so half plus 1 is 3 over 2. Meaning it is x raised to power 3 over 2 over 3 over 2, isn't it? Then we have minus a half x raised to power 3 over 2. You add 1, 3 over 2 plus 1. So you get 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 5 over 2. Then you divide by that 5 over 2, isn't it? Mm. Are we together? So that's how we integrate the, the, the form of our polynomial. Mm. Then here we have plus a third is a constant. Then x is raised to power 5 over 2. You add 1 to 8, you get 7 over. Then you divide by that result and power 7 over 2, isn't it? You move on. There is minus 1 over 4. X raised to power 7 over 2. You add 1 to it, you get 9 over. Then you divide by that 9 over 2, isn't it? How to integrate a polynomial. Then you move on. Plus 1 over 5. X raised to power 9 over 2 plus 1. 11 over 2. Then you divide it by 11 over. Then you put your limits are from 0 to 0 point. Are from 0 to 0 0.4. So what do we have? This will be what? Just go, just go to the calculator. You can simply write this in simplest form, isn't it? So if this is 3 over 2, meaning it will be 2 over 3, isn't it? See there is 1 divided by 3 over 2, you get it to be 2 over 1 is in the numerator, 3 over 2 is in the numerator. So it is now 1 divided by 3 over 2. Then you get that this half is 2 over 2 over 3 x raised to power 3 over 2. You are simplifying. Go to the next one. Then it is minus a half divided by 5 over 2. A half divided by 5 over 2, you get 1 over 5. See this a half is in the numerator. 5 over 2 is in the denominator. 
See now it is a half divided by 5 over 2. What do you get? 1 over 5, isn't it? Then your x is raised to power 5 over? Eh? Are we together? You move plus a third divided by 7 over 2. What do you get? 2 over 21. Then your x is raised to power? You see you are writing it in the simplest form you can easily deal with, isn't it? Then, minus a quarter divided by 9 over 2, 1 over 18. 1 over 18. Then your x is raised to power 9 over 2. Then, a fifth divided by 11 over 2, 2 over plus 2 over 55. Then your x is raised to power 11 over. Then you put your limits from 0 to 0 point 4. So it means it is going to be. Upper limit minus lower limit. Lower limit when you substitute zero in all this. See, lower limit will be zero. See, it means once you substitute the upper limit, you found the answer, isn't it? So, say 0.4 is equal to, is equal to 0 0.4, now it is your answer, isn't it? Then substitute. Where there is x, you put 0 0.4. Where there is x, you put 0 0.4. So, what do you get? You get 2 over 3 into 0 0.4 raised to power 3 over 2 minus 1 over 5 into 0 0.4 raised to power 5 over 2 plus 2 over 21 into 0 0.4 raised to power 7 over 2 minus 1 over 18 into 0 0.4 raised to power 9 over 2 plus 2 over 55 into 0 0.4 raised to power 11 over 2 so this is the upper limit isn't it then it is minus the lower limit. If you substitute zero, the lower limit, zero in everything will be zero, isn't it? So upper limit minus lower limit, what do you get? What do you get? Upper limit minus lower limit. What do you have? One five one six. You can say zero point one five two, isn't it? Okay. Minus zero. It just remains that way, isn't it? Yes. And you have solved the problem. You have solved the problem.